Okay, first of all, sorry I look so lovely, um, but I wanted to get something quick online, so, um, and I'm getting ready to go get on my bike, so I wanted to make sure I got this on there for you first. So make sure you have your unit circle out and your trig identity sheet, and follow along with uh, my notes. Obviously, we're not numbering notes right now because I just want you to be able to keep looking at the video and going back and forth over it. So, um... Let me know if you have any questions. I'm here, I'm accessible, and then I'll put an assignment online and you'll go and finish that so you can get another punch on your punch card. Yay! Okay, thanks. I'm going to now switch over to the Smart Notebook and start working on Chapter 5-3. This is new material, so here we go. So here we are going to be... Um, learning how to solve equations using um, the trig information. So let's start with our first one. So I think you guys are going to like this because it actually brings back the uh, numbers that you have been missing for a while. And you basically start solving like regular algebra. So you will probably enjoy this. Let's make sure I set my pen up well. Okay, good. All right. So first off, I'm looking at this, and if cosine x was just x, I would start manipulating things around to be able to solve for cosine x. So, first thing that I'm going to do is subtract 3 cosine x. So, so that gives me 2 cosine x equals root 3. So then I know all of you are probably either working ahead of me or you're waiting for my question, but what do I do in an x? Yes, I actually divide by 2. So cosine x equals root 3 over 2. Now, in most cases, we would be done. But in this case, we need to remember that cosine is positive. And then we need to take a look at our unit circle. I actually have a picture of a unit circle here that I'm going to go to. Remembering that cosine actually is root 3 over 2, I'm going to go to my unit circle and I'm going to look at where cosine would be positive, which we know cosine is positive. In which quadrants? Well, up here it says it's positive in quadrant 1 and positive in quadrant 2. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for where cosine, which is also our x value, equals root 3 over 2. Well, that would be at pi over 6. And then in this quadrant, it would be at 11 pi over 6. So... I'm going to go back to my screen, the first slide, and we said it was at pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Now, this is solving for all. So if you remember a previous unit where we always had to add plus 2n pi, you're going to do the same thing here because that means no matter how many times we go around the circle forever, this particular equation will give us root 3 over 2 at both 11 pi over 6 and pi over 6. So I will add on a plus 2n pi plus 2n pi. This is the final answer. Okay. Oh, it's not letting me write this. Okay, all right, so that solves the first one, and we're going to probably do four, um, and so hopefully you get the hang of it after we do that, and we'll go, I'll go back and forth with the unit circle too so you can see what I'm doing. So let's go to the next example, which is right here. Uh, first, I want to go into the unit circle and erase. I need a big eraser. Okay. And then we can go back to the next one. Okay, so our next equation 
Um, this is a little different because we have sine x on one side and negative sine x. So I'm going to add sine x because I'd rather have that. So I'm going to add sine x to both sides. Once I get back on pen. So that gives me a 2 sine x plus root 2 equals 0. Well, I still need to solve for sine x, so I'm going to subtract root 2 so that I have 2 sine x equals negative root 2. Then I'm going to, as you we did in the last one, I'm going to divide by 2. So sine x will now equal negative root 2 over 2. Okay? So we know that sine is negative in quadrants 3 and 4 because it goes along with the y value, which is negative in quadrants 3 and 4. So I'm going to go to my unit circle again, and I'm going to look for negative root 2. I'm going to look for this. I'm going to go back to my unit circle, and I'm going to go, okay, in quadrant 3 and quadrant 4, where will sine equal negative root 2 over 2? It equals that here, which is 5 pi over 4, and it equals that here, which is 7 pi over 4. So I'm going to go back to my problem. And I'm going to change the ink color just because I can so you can see me write the answers better. Let's see here. Let's try that one. Okay. So we said 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4, which makes sense. That's the third quadrant, and that's the fourth quadrant. So then I'm going to add plus 2 n pi plus 2 n pi so that no matter how many times I go around remember it will always be negative root 2 over 2 in quadrants 3 and 4 okay hopefully you understand that because now we're going to move on to something that's just a touch different but you'll understand why it's a touch different in a second. Let's go to, it would be another note in our classroom, but on here, um, it's a little different. So hang on. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to solve it just like we did the cosine and the sine before. But the difference here is we are taking the square root, sorry about that, we are taking the square root of each side. So it's a little bit different. So first I'm gonna add four because I wanna get tangent squared by itself. So that means three tangent squared x equals one. Then next step, we would divide by three, which makes tangent squared x equals one third. Now we need to do tan, we need to square root both sides. So I'll just use this red to kind of show it a little bit different. So that means now tan x will equal the square root plus or minus square root of one third, which is the same as plus or minus 1 over the square root of 3. Well, you know, Mrs. Dindal doesn't like radicals on the bottom, so you do have to rationalize. So many of you probably already did that in your head. So root 3 times root 3, which means my final number to look at the unit circle for is plus or minus root 3 over 3. So the difference here is with tangent, with sine and cosine, what's the period length? I'm going to let you think about that for a second. What would be the length of one period in both sine and cosine? Think about that for just a second. 
one period length for sine and cosine is one time around the circle, which is 2 pi all the way around. But tangent and cotangent, sorry about that, I'm getting a notification. Tangent and cotangent are only pi in length. So for this one, yes, we do need to go look for a plus or minus, but we also just need to look in quadrants one, let's see here, quadrant one and quadrant two, because they all repeat their values in three and four. So I've got a plus or minus root three over three for tangent. Now, tangent is also y over x in terms of letters. So if I'm looking for a root three over three, I have to look for one that starts out as a one over root three. So see here, my y over my x here would be one half over root three over two. And we've already talked about when you have the same denominator, you can cancel out the denominator. So then that would equal one over root three, which turns into root three over three, which is what we're looking for. So what I'm looking for is a, a coordinate like this, that is the same in the second quadrant, but the, the x value will be negative. So I can look over here and it's five pi over six. Now, so I've got pi over six and five pi over six. And that's where those will have tangent as plus or minus root three over three. So I'm gonna go back to my problem right here, and I'm going to list my answers. I'm doing green here just because I can, and I love green. So um, my positive root three over three would take me to pi over six. Plus, and again, it's only pi in length for the period. So instead of two pi n, or two n pi, however you like to write it, I put pi or n pi, because I only need to go halfway around the circle each time. And then the second one was negative root three over three, and that is five pi over six plus n pi. Those are the answers that you would be turning in for this particular problem. So hopefully that helps. Remember, you can always rewind this video and look at it and see if you can understand the steps and then make sure you've got your unit circle right next to you so you can look at it too in addition to the way I'm pointing at it. So, and our unit circles should look identical because um, this is the same one. So let me go to our last problem before we end this lovely lesson. Here's our last one. And I'm gonna give you a couple minutes. Actually, what I'm gonna do is pause the video for a second because I want you to actually try this on paper first. So I'm actually not pausing, you're gonna pause. So here's the pause, <laughs> I'm done. Okay, so hopefully you paused it to actually do the, the, the problem yourself. And now all I'm doing is working through it to make sure you did it right. That's kind of the goal here. So I'm gonna add 15 to each side. Okay, then I'm dividing by five. Okay. Okay, then I'm taking the square root. So tan x is going to equal plus or minus square root of three. Okay. I now go to my unit circle and I better erase all of this lovely stuff so we don't deal with that this time. Hang on just one second. And if you remember what I said earlier, root three, so tangent again, would equal y over x in letters. 
So what I'm looking for is a y over x situation that's going to just give me a root 3. And I see one right here. Because if I did y over x, and I cancel out the denominators, this equals root 3 over 1, which is root 3. So I know I'm working with pi over 3. Sorry, I did that. And then I'm looking over here for the negative counterpart, and that is 2 pi over 3. So I'm going to go back to my problem right here. And I'm going to write pi over 3 plus n pi and 2 pi over 3 plus n pi. And those are your final answers for this problem. So, with that said, I want to go... Mm. Let's just... Oh, I don't know. I was going to have fun. Oh, there we go. <laughs> just me having fun. There's just so many cool things you can do on here. I know it's kind of silly. Oh, look at the smiley faces. You're all missing the smiley faces. All right. That's it. I'm sorry I'm silly, but when you have fun stuff to do, I know some of you are going, this is not fun. Leave me alone. Okay. All right. So I hope that helped. I'm back. That's scary. Woo, look at me. Anyway, I'm going to put an assignment on, I'm going to put this video in the videos in our coronation, no wait, coronation, <laughs> coronation file. And then I will put an assignment also listed underneath so you can work on those. And we'll do it like we did last time. Try the assignment, do the best you can, upload photos for me, and then I will go through and make comments on the assignments like I have already done on the ones that have been turned in. I hope you're all well, and I will talk to you again soon. And one of these days, I'll look more lovely than I do right now. Have a good one. Bye.